So, in this module we will learn about information hiding in Java. The concept information hiding is a very interesting as well as important concept. So, our today's uh, basically the information hiding that means, what are the different way that a programmer can control the access of different elements. Different elements means the method and the members that belongs to a class. So, for this the Java developer has coined a number of modifiers, they are called access modifiers. So, in this lectures we will try to understand the different access modifiers and then their, their usage. Now, so far the access modifier are concerned there are four types, they are called default, public, protected and private. So, if we fixed one access modifier before a member for example, before a field or a value or a data or a method then according to the access specifier that value or the method will be accessed. So, if it is public then it should be visible to anywhere. So, that means, any other class from any other class or any method belongs to any class can access that kind of members. On the other hand if it is protected then that member cannot be accessed by all classes that member can be accessed by any method that belongs to any inherited subclasses. On the other hand if it is a private then that member cannot be accessed by any other method other than the method in that class itself. So, these are the three public protected and private and then default there are possibilities that without making any specifier explicitly then it is called the default access specifier. That means, if we do not use public protected private just keep it blank void then, then the access specifier is called the default. If it is a default then that members will be accessible to any class that belongs to the same directory where that class belongs or it is basically belong to the same package. So, it is basically either same file or it is the same class belongs to the same directory the access will be available otherwise it cannot be accessed. So, these are the three uh, four different access modifiers and we will just discuss about all these modifiers one by one with example, so that we can understand about it. So, we can say in other words that access modifier specify the scope that a member have, whether scope is within that class or scope is within that directory or scope is anywhere. So, this is the concept uh, that is there. Now, here the scope can be understood from this uh, table, we have mentioned the access level and the different modifiers that we have discussed four modifiers. Now, so far the public is concerned as we see any class they have the access to public member, any package also it has the access to that member, any subclass and it can be from anywhere. So, if it is a public means it is a global look like. So, anybody can see it, can use it, can print it, can change the value whatever it is there. On the other hand if it is a protected within the same class any method can access this protected data mem protected member within the same package the protected is accessible within the sub class the protected is accessible. However, protected is not accessible other than these three things from anywhere it cannot be. So, if the two class files are in the same package then protected member can be accessed in any class it belongs to that same package. Now, let us come to the private as I told you private is the stricter access specification it is accessible a member which is declared as a private is accessible to that class only where that member is declared as a private outside this class that member cannot be accessible 
either it is package or it is a subclass or anywhere. Now, the default as I told you default member is accessible to the same class where it is declared as a default and also in the same directory it is called the package where that class is that member is declared as a default access specification. So, this table I suggest you to remember it is very informatic table it can give you the whole summary of the different modifiers. Now, let us have a quick look over the different modifiers one by one first we shall discuss about default access modifier. So, it is the default means we do not have to mention any access specification explicitly before a member that is a data or a method it is without mentioning these things it can be. And as I told you if the default is an access specifier for a member that means it is accessible only within the same class or within the same package that means package concept is little bit not known to you regarding this package our next lecture has been planned. So, there we will discuss about the package, package is a collection of java files actually. So, there may be all files belongs to one sub directory or a directory. So, a directory we can say roughly as a package, but package has many more other implication. So, now you can understand a package if we refer to it means that a package is a set of files which are belongs to a common directory one directory. Anyway, so the default access specifier we are going to discuss about it let us have a quick demo a quick uh, uh, quick look of the two class files that we have discussed here. Now, here we discussed two class file and in one class file and we say that it is a and one class file we declare one class this class is called class A and it is stored in a file let let us the name of the file be a dot java. So, this is the one class we have declared and stored it is in the in a file called a dot java. Now, this is a very simple one class that we have discussed for only uh, uh, demonstration or you can say for illustration. So, actually this class can be very complex anyway. So, this is a simple class a stored in a dot java file and here is the another file another file we can say the name of the file as b uh, that uh, b dot java and here the class b is declared here. Now, here you can note two things here the class a that we have declared here and this does not have any specifier nor this one also does not have any specifier. So, here we can see both the class a without any access specification. So, what I want to say in other words is that access specifier can be prefixed before a the class declaration, before a method and before a data member as in this case only the class and then one method belongs to this. So, we can specify the access specifier either here or here or both whatever it is there. Now, in this case as we see there is no access specifier mentioned. So, if no access specifier mentioned then it does mean that the class A is declared as a default. Similarly, the method message which return type is void does not have any access specification this means that it is default by default. So, access specification for both class A and method msg belongs to the class A is default access specification. Now, let us come to the class B again here there is no access specification. So, there is no access specification it does it means that class B is also by default it is a default access specification. Now, this is the usual method uh, that public static void as we have already discussed about it and here always we have to mention that public access specification this is obvious and without any hesitation you have to do it because without these things no one can run the program particularly the main class if it is there. So, this is the public access specifier by default is there and that is rest of the things are just simply the accessing of the different. Now, in the first statement we see we create an object of class A here and in this method main we call the method msg which belongs to the class object that means which belongs to the class A. So, if we run this program it will print 
hi I am in class A this kind of message is there. Now, so if these are the two files belongs to the different directory then access specifier will not work for you. If they are in the same file if we maintain this and this in the same file say b dot java then access specifier default access will work for you then in this case these two will give will not give any error. But if they maintain in the different file but not in the same directory then it will uh, produce an error. So, this will be an error, but if again it produce into the same sub uh, different sub directory it is an error and if it is in the same directory there is no error. So, there are two things that you should consider default access fire if both the classes are belong to the same file. So, there will be no error if they are belong to the different sub directory then there will be an error if they are belong to the same directory then there will be no error. So, these are the three things that you should consider with access specification. So, this is about the default access modifier. Now, let us have the another example of this one and here we can see we have little bit different uh, uh, concept I have introduced here. Uh, okay. So, here is a package my package as I told you in which directory this class belongs we have to specify this one. So, that is why this concept is there this indicates that this file that means, a dot java belongs to one sub directory called pack 1. So, that is why the package now regarding package statement we will learn a lot later on. So, this in this case what we have done is that this program is saved as a dot java in the sub directory pack 1. Now, again this is the another program same save this program as b dot java it is it is in the sub directory pack 2. Now, as you see this program and this program they are belong to the different sub directory that mean default access specifier this one or this one will leads to a compilation error. So, this is the things that we have already discussed earlier. So, this is the concept. So, now access specification is all about this one. Now, here again you can understand that in this case there will be no error this is because if you see here this program we save a dot java in a sub directory say tem and here this program b dot java is the same directory as both the class files are in the same directory. So, default access specifier works that means in this case they will not give any error. So, these are the three things that we have to consider about or the same class files in the same directory files in the different directory. So, this is the concept and then access specifier will work for you. Now, let us come to discuss about another uh, modifier it is called the public modi access modifier. Now, so far the stricter sense is concerned public specifier is basically in a very uh, weak strict uh, access specification very weak next after public the protected then private and finally, default default is basically uh, sorry uh, after public then protected then default then private in that sense. So, as you know private is the more stricter access specification compared to the public public is the weakest access specification in this range you can consider the table that I have already discussed that table you can follow it. Anyway, so if we declare any class or any data or any method as a public this means that that class will be accessible to any other class whether this class belongs to the same uh, directory uh, uh, class into the same directory or belongs to class in any other directory. So, that is the concept it is here. So, it has the scope among all other, it has the weak scope among all other modifier. Now, let us consider a simple example first here what we can see uh, this is the class a uh, we have declared a dot java and in a sub directory say pack 1 and here we can see we have declared the class a as public. And now another class b which is an default access specifier say and this class is save as b dot java in another directory say pack 2. So, there are two classes 
class A and class B both belongs to the different directory, whereas class A having the public access specifier. Now, if it is like this, then let us come to this one accessing of the members which belong to the class A. So, in that case this will not be an error, because this is public and this method is also declared as a public as the method is public whatever then this method is accessible by any uh, class which belong to the same directory or any other directory outside that directory. So, this is the concept about the public. So, public is the weakest spe access specification as we have already mentioned. So, in that case you can see this is the output that it will give you I have to be obvious. So, there will be no compilation error. Now, again if there is a what is called the restriction which is not met then this will be reported not during the run time rather during the compile time. That means, you will not be able to compile this program successfully if it violates some access specifier as per the rule. Now, so this is the public access uh, modifier let us come to another example. Here again we declare uh, class A uh, as a public and there is again another class B both are declared as a public. So, here we create a two class classes class A and class B and in class A there are public data member and then public message. This means that the entire class is basically accessible to any other uh, classes anywhere actually any uh, classes. So, according to this if this class is in the same file not necessarily to be same file rather if it is in the same directory rather or we can say in the other directory also no problem all these are quite ok there will be no compilation error. Now, again I just want to mention one more important thing that you may face sometimes that if we maintain these two classes here these classes and these classes in the same file then the java compiler does not allow to specify all the classes which are belong to the same class by any other access specifier. That means, if class A and class B if we type using same program and save as a say class B dot java then that public access file you cannot mention. Because in the same file there is no access restriction actually because the you are a programmer you are writing this class you are using this class then why you should mention any access specification there is a no meaning actually. So, in that case the java developer suggest you to make it default. So, no access specification provided that if you declare all classes belong to the same file. So, again my advice is that whenever you write two or more classes and save all the classes in the same dot java file you should have give the access specification default do not put any access specification other than default that is the con uh, you will be able to you will not be able to run this program in fact compile this program in fact successfully. So, this will report an error usually people follow this one. So, public is not required until and it is a not a good practice actually it is a good practice for any programmer is that if you create any class all this class you should maintain in a separate file. So, all files can be maintained individually isolated way and then all these files can be accessed in a your main class that is the practice the good practice of course. So, in that case all those access modification matters actually if you store all the files in one file all access modification does not matter too much because it is public in any way. Anyway, so this is the concept about the public access modifier and here is the same example you will be able to understand here we define the class A as a dot java in one sub directory and here the class B also save as another sub directory and as we main make here is a public. So, it is a public that means from any class which belongs to any other sub directory this class A with all its member will be accessible. So, this is the concept here. So, that is the uh, this one is uh, look uh, work like this. So, this is the public access modification is very easy. So, public if you mention it then it can be accessible to anyone there. Now, one more thing that I want to mention here is that if you declare a class as a public for example, here 
we declare a class as a public, if we declare a class as a public and if you have the access uh, the other members under this class without any access specification that means, if they are the default access specifier then mean that if they are the default then they are also public. So, here for example, it is declared a public and this method is a default access specifier this means that this message is also public that means, this method can be accessible can be accessed by any other class in anywhere. So, this is the idea about the uh, public access modifier. Now, let us come to the discussion of the, our next modifier which is the uh, strictest one the private access modifier. So, this modifier whenever you specify for a class this means that any method which belongs to the same class can access it and outside that class no method can access that member. So, this is the concept of uh, this uh, private access modifier. Now, let us have an example here. Now, we declare class A and access specification is public. So, public means it is a it can this class A can be accessed uh, from anywhere. However, if we see this is the member which is declared as a private that means, int data is declared as a private. So, being a private member, so any method which belong to this class can use it. So, this method uh, the message if I write say this one plus data if you write say plus data no issue. So, it can use it. Now, let us consider the class B may be in the same file it if it is in the different file in same directory or subject e, it also equally applicable anyway. So, this class B also declared as a public that means, this class can be accessed out from outside any other class. Now, here if you see okay, let us declare this uh, 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 this class as a class B and this whole the program is saved in one file called B Java. Now, so here as it is a public class, so we can create an object. So, because public is accessible, so no problem. So, this is not an error and here you see system dot out dot print ln obg dot data. Now, here is a problem because data is declared as a private and we want to access it from the class B. So, this will not allow you that means, you cannot access the data you cannot read the value of data by creating an object of class A. So, there is an error. On the other hand as this message is declared as a private uh, public because the public and this is also public then this is also accessible that means, it will give this print message. So, you can understand that okay. So, private means it belongs to if it is a private then only this one. So, outside this one it does not have any access that is the concept. Now, so this is a simple example now let us have consider another example. Uh, in this example what we have to do is that again we declare this is a private now class is private if class is declared as a private then all the member that is there with the default access specifier also become private. So, in this case as this is a private and there is a default. So, by default all these members are private. Now, let us come to this program again here class B the main class let us save this program as a B dot Java which include class A and class B file in the same file and here we create an A object this one we cannot create because class A is declared private and for any private class no object can be declared outside. So, this is an error. Now, here again system dot out dot print ln object dot data we are accessing the private data it is an error and object this is also an error. So, you will not be able to access any method here. So, you can understand that private if it is declared here then it is not accessible outside it. Now, so this is our example that we have discussed about the private access modification and this is another example and this is a very interesting example and you should note it very carefully what we have done it here. So, this class A is declared as a public this means and we can create an object that is no issue. Now, here this method is public this means that we can call this method from here because the public method can be accessible from any other class 
from any other method belongs to any class whatever it is there. Now, let us come to the discussion of this one. So, private in data. So, for so far this method is concerned this is ok no error no compilation error because data is accessible to any method any private method which is declared within the same class. Now, let us come here whether we can use this one see here fallacy is that the data is a private and we access this private by means of this method. Now, if we can use access this method then internally basically or indirectly I can say indirectly this data is accessible to this class B although data is a private, but here is actually in Java you can do that. So, if a method which is in the same class where a private member is declared access that one and if that method that means this method is declared as a public and then public can be accessible. So, via this public all the private can be accessible. So, this is basically uh, accessible. So, here basically we can access the private member in other way indirectly. So, here is the problem is that this method is the main critical. So, if you develop one class where you can declare a method as a public this means that you allow any other programmer to access this. So, it is accessible whatever the data member everything is there whatever it is you can you are giving the accessibility to, to others. So, that now if you do not want to give access then definitely you should declare this as a private that means this is strictly private I do not want to give access to any data or any method belongs to my class. So, this is the concept that is there uh, so far the private uh, data is concerned. Now, let us another aspects so far the private uh, data is concerned uh, it is a constructor. Now, what will happen if we declare a constructor as a private. Now, in this case you see this class is declared as a public. So, anybody should ca uh, can access this class that will create an object of this class. However, here you declare as a private constructor is declared as a private and then this method by default is a public method because it is a public class belongs to public class. Now, here if you create a constructor then means whenever we create an object then constructor will be called here. Now, when the constructor is called in this case as it is a private, private cannot be executed from anywhere right. So, this will lead to a compilation error that means if you declare a class as a public, but it constructor as a private then no one can create any object of that class. So, usually this is a very harder one rule you so if you want if you want to make a class as public. So, better that you should not create any constructor which is a pri which is with private constructor. So, usually we do not do. So, constructor should be declared as a public like. So, that object can of that class can be created anyway, but once you can create an object it means that you can access all the members those are public or protected or default it is there anyway. So, this is the idea about that private constructor is not advisable in actual situation actually. Now, I am ok in the step of discussing the protected access modifier as I already told you that protected access modification is limited to the inherited class. That means, if a member is declared as protected in its super class then that member is accessible to any derived class or any sub class which can be obtained from that. So, this is the concept of protected. Now, here let us have a quick look about it class A one class that we have declared here as a public and here one data we have declared as protected. Now, the class B here if we want to access this protected data then it will be a compilation error you cannot access this protected error, but if they are in the same file in the same then this is there is no compilation error. So, in the same file it can allow, but in the different file outside or any class cannot access the protected data. Now, so this is the concept as a protected now here is another example let us see whether it will work for you or not. Now, class A and here is a public this is a protected method and here you see class B extends A that means B is a derived class sub class of super class A. So, by virtue of sub class it can access any methods those are public and protected into this one. So, 
here that i which is declared public is accessible through this one. So, this is also correct and as it is a public and then b object new b. So, no problem b is a class itself. So, it is also create object. Now, if I write say a object and a also that is also correct no problem because it is a public a public object can be created. However, all the protected message cannot be accessed outside this one, but it if, if they are in the same it can be accessible here. But in this case, uh, so it is an extent. So this is a valid. Uh, okay, compilation is successful as well as output is valid. So this is the protected access modifier, and here is another. So the same example, little bit in a twisted manner. We create this class save in a a dot Java. Here another class save in a b dot Java. Class a is in a different directory, and class b is in a different directory. Class b extends a. So class b is a subclass of super class a so no problem all protected members for example this message is accessible to this and so this is a valid output so this is the concept of protected so very simple the protected means uh, only sub class that inherits a super class can access it whether this is in the same file in the different file but in the same directory or the file that is there in outside any other directory no issue so this is the protected access modification so, protected is basically little bit uh, limits the access specification. Now, here again this is a simple example that you can think about. Uh, in this example, we declare class A and this is the simple one extends that is simply a derived class of this super class and within this class the main method is declared. So, you can see if we do it then simple object new simple if we create an object of this class and we call the object method here. So, this will be accessible this one. So, all these things are there. Now, so class A basically here again one thing you can notice that method overriding. So, uh, here uh, we see that this message is declared as a protected in class A and again the message is overridden here in the subclass this one. So, if it is a protected and if it is a subclass of that so, overridden is possible, but if it is not suppose no access specification is there. So, it is a say default and then and then if you declare is a protected here, here is a protected then the problem. The problem is that if it is a default one method you want to protect it uh, override it as a protected one then it will not allow you to do that. So, this is a stricter one sense that you cannot do that. So, all these things if the access specification is not allowed it will not successfully compile your program. So, during the compilation time if any access position is violated in your any program so far access is concerned it will be there. If whatever the access position that you use it and if they uh, compile it successfully then means you are allowing the program to uh, give the access to all those things are there. So, we have discussed about the access specification in order to hide the information here information in the term of data as well as method the whole class is also considered as an information. Now, our next topic is basically that package we have referred to many times package package package. Now, we will discuss about in Java how a package can be created. So, this is very important because as a programmer more specifically as a Java programmer it is your responsibility to build very large software and whenever you have to be very very complex. Uh, the voluminous large software then definitely you have to manage all the classes very carefully. So, a package concept in Java gives you that kind of skill so that you can manage very large software configure your software very efficiently. Now, if I ask you one question what is your idea is it possible that two classes having the same name, but in two different packages are to be used in another class outside the package. So, okay, answer to these questions will be understood once we discuss uh, the concept of package in our next module. Okay, thank you very much.